Is it child abuse to overfeed your children, or is the problem more about what you're feeding them? This three-year-old is approaching 100 pounds, and her mom is proud of it. Pancakes, plates of bacon, double cheeseburger, bigger is better. You don't think this kind of eating is going to hurt her health? No. Well, earlier this year, Dr. David Ludwig, an obesity specialist at Harvard-affiliated Children's Hospital in Boston, wrote an opinion piece in the Journal of the American Medical Association. He recommended severely obese children be removed from their parents' homes and placed into foster care for their own good. Obesity, he says, causes major medical issues such as type 2 diabetes, breathing difficulties, and liver and heart problems. Hey, for best, it's Freely Bonatti Go Heal. Welcome to another episode. So today is Motivational Mondays. I'm here to help motivate you for the week. So today's topic is childhood obesity, and specifically, should we take children away from their parents if they have become obese in their care? That's what we're here to talk about. It's a very serious thing, but it needs to be confronted. I mean, one in five preschoolers are now obese. I'm talking about like little kids who should be running around happy, healthy, enjoying life are now suffering from obesity related illness. This is not good enough, folks. You know, we've got obese children becoming obese parents of obese yeah, parents and adults dying prematurely, dying painfully. And it's projected that this generation of children isn't going to outlive their parents. The first generation ever. $14 billion is spent on childhood obesity every single year in the USA. $14 billion that could be put to better use. So the facts are that federal law states that physical abuse, emotional abuse, psychological abuse and neglect the four things that actually constitute child abuse. So neglect, neglect is not nourishing your child properly or not looking after them properly and allowing them to become obese. This is our responsibility as parents. Do you know those? Do you know those? How old are you? 13. Do you know what that is? Jesus, no, hold up a courgette and a stick of celery and you haven't got a clue what it is. Who knows what this is? Potato? So you think these are potatoes? Not potatoes, though. Oh, no. Do you know what this is? No? Do you know what that is? Do you know what that is? Broccoli. What about this? A good old friend. Do you know no. what this is, honey? Celery. No. What do you think it is, darling? Onion. Onion, no. Well, so that situation with Jamie Oliver where the kids didn't know basic vegetables like beetroot and celery and zucchini, that was a shock to me. I just thought kids knew. But that's just a sign of the times. That's where we're at, folks. Okay, these kids aren't educated on these foods because they're not eating them. They're not being given them enough. I'm sure in a heartbeat they're going to recognise a cheeseburger. Straight away, they're going to recognise a cheeseburger. So, like, I understand as parents, parents are bombarded with all this advertising. They're up against a devil. This massive marketing machine that is angled at children. Release the crudes! Uh, that's not food. This is food. Eating right can be fun when you make balanced choices like milk and fruit in your McDonald's Happy Meal. Finally it's morning, stretching them yawning. B, B, and C is what I'm thinking of, and it only can be found in my Reese's Puffs. Lucky Charms. Oh, yeah. Okay, conditioning their minds, making them think that, oh yeah, like Happy Meals are cool and, you know, there's no such thing as animal cruelty, you know, like dancing chickens, all this rubbish. There's so much conditioning that parents are up against. So the most powerful thing is to be the example, is to eat healthy, to exercise, to be that healthy example for your children. I remember growing up, you know, I was like, my parents are like gods to me. I would do anything that they wanted me to do. I would eat like them. They were such a huge influence. If we expect our children to go and get fit, you know, run around the block and eat fruits and vegetables, but we're sitting back on the couch, slamming back the junk food, is that gonna happen? Of course it's not, because we're not being that example. So don't be unfair to your children and be an unhealthy example to them and expect them to be something else. If oh. she's hungry, I feed, I feed both of us. We do eat it four or five times a week. Zoe Hamilton is a 21-year-old single mother. I normally get the Philip Burger combo and her, she gets a nugget snack box. She loves her nuggets. 
It's healthy. It's not healthy, healthy, but it is healthy in small quantities. What are you eating for after nap snack? We have some fresh Maui coconut meat, some strawberries, and Suriname cherries. Oh, we have mango salad with hemp seeds on top. He loves hemp seeds. Do you love hemp seeds, Elvis? Yeah. So it's just uh, baby spinach and some uh, romaine lettuce from our garden and some chopped cucumber. Elvis, are you going to give Mommy a bite? No. Give Mommy a bite. No. Please. <laughs> okay, give me a bite. <sighs> hey! She and her 18-month-old daughter, Keishia Rose, eat KFC almost every day. But don't call her a bad mum. It's lunchtime. She gets her healthy food when we go home for dinner. She has her, all her veggies and that when we go home, so I don't see the harm of it just being for lunch. She obviously likes it. Besides, Zoe does like to mix up the menu. We do change change from KFC to Macca's and sometimes we give Hi. each other, I'll give her Subway. When my parents were my age, they, um, they ate junk food a lot and yeah, they pretty much passed it on to me and my little brothers. So I can hear some of you saying, Freely, it's too expensive to eat healthy. I can't afford it. I can't afford to feed the family healthy. Okay, folks, I've got news for you. A high-carb vegan diet is the cheapest diet on the planet. Rice, potatoes, beans, baby, they're the cheapest calories that you can get, even with government subsidies. Like, the government's pumping 70% of subsidies in the meat and dairy industry and a measly 7% into the fruit and veg industry, which is disgusting. You know, even with that disgusting corruption, you still eat more cheaply on a high-carb vegan diet. And at the end of the day, you need to put your health above all. If you don't invest in your health now, you will be investing in it later when you're sick. With medication, with operations, with time off work, you will be pumping a lot more money into it. So invest now, invest in your family. You know, your health and their health is what is paramount. You need to be having vegetables, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit every single day. Twice a week is completely not acceptable. We think that the reasons for this are combined with low income, particularly for households on Newstart. Sue King is from welfare organisation Anglicare. They've recently conducted a study on low income families and their relationship with takeaway food. Some of these families, it seems, have little choice. cut his portions and I'm going to continue to do so until they're greatly reduced in size. Or is the problem more about what you're feeding them? Exactly. So it's not how much you're feeding the children, it's what you're feeding them. They can eat unlimited fruits and vegetables and rice and pasta and potatoes, but just don't load them up with animal fats, with oil, with fats, okay? A high-carb vegan diet is going to slim children down. They're going to be happy and healthy. They're going to concentrate more. They're not going to be bullied for being obese. They're not going to have to go through all these operations. They're not going to die prematurely. I mean, how many of these children who are obese are following a high carb vegan diet? Zero. That's why, because it's impossible to get obese on a high carb vegan diet. So when you put your children on this diet, they're just going to thrive and they're going to shrink and they're going to be happy little Vegemites. There's no doubt Connor's weight is a problem. But should the authorities intervene? Well, there is something of a legal precedent, but the victim isn't what you'd expect. This was Rusty the Labrador shortly after the RSPCA took him into care. He weighed in at a massive 11 and a half stones and could hardly walk. Just last month, these two brothers were convicted in court of causing unnecessary suffering by overfeeding their pet dog. That has led some experts to question why a dog appears to get more protection than a child. Tam Fry has been campaigning on child growth issues for 30 years. When I heard about this case, I thought, how amazing 
that we should take two men to court for overfeeding their dog, yet we allow our children to develop into obese children without society really seeming to care about it. Now, Ruby, thanks for coming in today. Um, I think a lot of people would be shocked at a, a book trying to tell children, don't eat meat. If we're trying to get kids to eat healthier, then we really need to include them and engage them in a discussion about what really goes on in meat and dairy and, and why our fruits and vegetables are, in fact, healthier for us. Well, I mean, people are carnivores. Uh, we are built to eat meat as well as, uh, well, we're omnivores really, we're not just carnivores, we're omnivores. We're made to eat all of God's good creatures. And I think that in the book you show some of the nastier sides of, of the meat and the poultry industry. That's not the way everything is. And if we encourage children to well, eat... Well, let me interrupt. We do Okay, go ahead. We may be able to consume anything we want, but that doesn't necessarily mean that brings us the best quality of life. And if we were true carnivores, they don't shy away from gore and blood then we shouldn't be afraid of talking about what we do to animals. A true carnivore goes through blood and skin and hair and nails. They don't shy away. Well, I, I don't shy away from what I eat at all, uh, but I have to ask you, are you shielding children from proper nutrients by encouraging them not to eat animal products at all? So no eggs, no cheese, no milk, no meat, no fish. That deprives them of a good many necessary nutrients, does it not? I disagree with you. I think if we look at the health trajectories of children, we have 20% of kids who are who age, from age 2 to 19 are obese. In America, the two leading causes of death are cancer and heart diseases. These are all things that are caused by or exacerbated by eating meat and dairy. And we have the American Dietetic Association, which is by no means a renegade organization. They've acknowledged that a well-balanced vegan diet is appropriate for anybody of any age and stage in life. So if we look at what we're up against and we look at all of the studies that are sh com continuing to show the link between chronic disease and animal products, then I think it's the absolute best path that you can introduce your children to. Uh -huh. You're saying kids need cholesterol that comes from animal fats. They absolutely need cholesterol, and the only source of cholesterol is animal products. Now, uh, the nutrients in animal fats support healthy thyroid function, and that is a big factor in obesity. If you have a healthy thyroid gland, you have a good, fast metabolism, and uh, you don't tend to gain weight. Okay. And when... I don't know about you, but I don't take weight loss and health advice of people who are obviously struggling with their weight and unhealthy. That would be going in the opposite to what I wanted to do, you know, in the opposite direction to where I want to go. So I go to the people who are getting the results that I desire and I follow what they are recommending. Because it's obvious some people aren't thriving on the program they're recommending, so that is a sign. Listen to your instinct and follow people who are getting the results, the long-term results that you desire. Okay, so next up is a childhood obesity success story. This girl, is, you know, she's done an amazing job. She's lost a ton of weight. She looks great and she feels great. And, you know, it just is an example that, you know, if she can do it, then any other child can do it too. So check this out. By the time she was nine years old, Brianna Bond was 186 pounds. The extra weight made it difficult for her to breathe and move around. She soon became a target for bullies. So Brianna's mom decided to take matters into her own hands and design an exercise routine for her daughter. The entire family began walking a four mile trail near their home. Before long, Brianna lost 37 pounds. Along with a healthy diet that limits fat to 20 grams a day, that limits fat to 20 grams a day, that limits fat to 20 grams a day. And wait till you see Brianna now. You ready to come on out? Come on, Brianna. Fantastic. So you've lost now, what, 66 pounds. How do you feel? Great. I'll bet you do. And you look you look so great right now. You look so healthy. But what would you say, if, if, you, if parents are watching, what is the one big piece of advice you'd give them? Is to start as soon as possible. Exercise, healthy eating habits, 
And yeah, and don't be afraid to do the tough love. I mean, it's it's worth it in the long run. You know, it's, it's their life that's at stake. Okay, fruit bats. So I want to hear your opinions in the comments below. Is this child abuse? Should children be taken away from their parents if they're being allowed to get obese in their care? Let me know your thoughts and your feedback in the comments below. So I want to just wrap this video up. Look, we are in the grips of a serious obesity epidemic. One in five preschoolers is obese. This is not okay. And this is where it starts, in childhood. That's where the problem starts. So we need to nip it in the butt there. Statistically, obese children become obese adults. They die prematurely, they die painfully, and we have control of this. Okay, so we need to step up today. We need to, need to start being a healthy example for our children. And that means following a high carb, raw vegan, high carb, cook vegan lifestyle. You know, it's gonna bring you that vibrancy, that energy you need to actually look after your child as well. And then your child's gonna look up to you and be like, wow, you know, how awesome is mummy? I'm gonna follow everything she's doing. And I know for a fact, you know, like, like my own personal experience is, Children look up to their parents. They are like mini me's, you know, they follow you. So make sure you're being that healthy example. And of course, there's gonna be some times where there's junk food coming in there, but you can minimize that by feeding them this lifestyle, by feeding them a healthy diet, because their nutritional needs are gonna be taken care of. So the brain's not gonna be going crazy, going, mommy, you know, I want some junk food. Give me some junk food now. It's not gonna be like that. And on a side note, the sugary lollies and stuff like that, and even like soft drinks, they're not making kids fat, okay? It's the fatty junk food, it's a KFC, it's a McDonald's, it's a cream buns, those things are making kids fat. Neither one is healthy, so you gotta stick to a high carb, whole foods, healthy, raw vegan or vegan lifestyle. All right, so I hope that helped, I hope that was inspiring. Don't forget to go fruit, woo, woo. <laughs> All right yourself, and I will see you soon. Stay tuned. Butter. Now, where's it come from? A dairy cow, sweet corn, or sunflower? I think it's bee. From bee. You think that butter comes from sweet corn? Yeah. It's actually a cow. Sausages. Does it come from this beef cattle here, a sausage dog, or does it come from a uh, corn dog, which is growing? Ah, um, see. Okay, corn dogs don't actually grow. Chocolate. Where does it come from? Cocoa pod, coconut, or a cocoa lake? You think that uh, chocolate comes from a cocoa lake? Yeah. Okie dokie. Now, honey, where does it come from? Honey bear, honey bee, or honey dew? I think a bear. Guacamole, where does it come from? Apples, avocados, or broccoli? Apples. Apples. No. Now, cheese, where does it come from? The moon, macaroni, or a cow? I would say a macaroni. Banana girl.